Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. We're, we're so glad that you're taking some time uh, to celebrate the birth of our Savior together tonight. Let's just pray together and then Tracy and Kevin are going to come and lead us in a time of worship. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this evening where we can come together to celebrate your birth. We just pray your blessing upon the servants. And we pray the sense of your comfort amongst all the families that are tuning in tonight. We ask this in your name. Amen.
chapter 2 verses number 1 to 7 in those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world and everyone went to their own town to register so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem the town of David because he belonged to the house in the line of David he went there to register of Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. I'd like to share a story with you tonight about a boy by the name of Wally. Wally was in a Sunday school program and Wally was kind of big for his age of nine years old. He was kind of a, a slow learner, but he had a big heart. And because of that, most of the children really liked him. His parents were wondering what part Wally might play in the Christmas play. They thought perhaps that he would be a stagehand or maybe a curtain puller, so, since he was kind of big for his age. Everyone was delighted to find out that he was cast in the part of the innkeeper. He only had to appear in one scene, and he only had to deliver one line. Sorry, there's no room in the inn. Wally had his lines down in no time. Christmas Eve comes, his parents and his grandparents are seated in the audience, the, the lights dim and a hush settles over the group. The play begins with the familiar words of the narrator. This is how the birth of the Messiah happened. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree 
that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Then the curtains open, and in walked Mary and Joseph. And Joseph walked up to the front desk of the inn. Joseph asked Wally, could we have a room for the night? My wife is about to give birth. But Wally stumbled over his lines. He said, there is, there is, there is. Everyone felt sorry and everyone felt embarrassed for Wally. But then poor Wally in desperation blurted out, look, there's plenty of room at my place. Just come on home with me. Now, that's a delightful twist on the familiar story where the roles are clearly defined. We know that Herod is the villain. The innkeeper appears to be uncaring and cold. The shepherds and the magis, they're the heroes of the story. And Mary and Joseph, they're the faithful ones who were willing to endure whatever came their way. But maybe the innkeeper gets a bad rap. Was it really his fault that the inn was filled up? Caesar had ordered this census of the entire Roman world. And Mary and Joseph, they arrived late in the middle of the night. Was it really the innkeeper's fault? When you look at the other characters in the Christmas story, they all have an advantage that the innkeeper did not have. Mary had an angel visit her and explain to her that she was going to give birth to the Messiah. Joseph had an angelic vision in his dream where it was explained to him. The shepherds had the heavenly choir proclaiming the Messiah's birth. And even the Magi, they had a star to follow. Now, I bet if the innkeeper, if he had been given an angelic messenger, giving him a heads up, I'm sure that he would have reserved the spot, friends, for them. You see, friends, the innkeeper represents all of us. The innkeeper represents every believer. Because most of the time, we are not going to be given a heads up that Jesus is going to be coming and knocking on the door of our life and ask if we have any room for him. Just like the innkeeper, friends, we're not going to be given a special revelation or preparation. Instead, when we're in the midst of a very busy time in our life, Jesus is going to show up unannounced to test our faithfulness. And our faithfulness gets tested, friends, by how we respond to people in need. Because we're going to see Jesus in the face of the poor. Friends, we're going to see Jesus in the face of the powerless and the less fortunate. We're going to see Jesus in the face of people who are being treated unfairly and need an advocate. And our faithfulness is measured by how we respond to these people. And oftentimes, those tests will come late in a very busy season of our life where we're tired and we're irritable and we're doing everything we can just to keep up. Just like the innkeeper, that's when Jesus is most likely to show up and ask, do you have any room for me? The idea that there is no room for Jesus would become a reoccurring theme throughout the book of Luke. Once Jesus began his earthly ministry, there was no room for him in his hometown of Nazareth. There was no room for him in the religious community because the chief priests had rejected him outright. There wasn't any room for him in the economic world. Because according to Jesus, the purpose of wealth was to give it away. And there was certainly going to be no room for him 
in the polite society because Jesus hung around with sinners and prostitutes and tax collectors. But yet somehow Jesus attracted a following that grew into a movement that became a worldwide religion because the people who did make room for Jesus friends underwent a profound change of heart. In Jesus, they found peace. They found joy. They found hope. They found love. As I close, in a few days, the season of Christmas will be over and it will be back to life as usual. Have you made any room for Jesus tonight? Will you make room for Jesus in the unexpected, busy times of your life? Tracy and Kevin are going to come and they're going to lead us in our, our closing uh, hymn for the night, Silent Night. Christmas yet, and that you would just be surrounded with the comfort of the presence of our Lord and Savior. Let me just share the benediction with you tonight. Go in peace, love and care for one another in Christ's name. Go in the confidence of people who have found mercy through him, keeping the commandments and letting go of all that binds you to the ways of this world. And may God come close to you and keep you safe. May Christ Jesus reward your faithfulness a hundredfold. And may the Holy Spirit be your help in time of need, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>